Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dustin Perry from Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International, and you are tuned into the Paranomaly Zone. Look, I know the supernatural is something that isn't supposed to happen, but it does happen. A ghostly apparition in the dark of night. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, that's his parian. Hey there, ponderers of the paranormal. This is the Paranomaly Zone, your home for all things unexplained, mysterious, odd, and of course, all the good times in between. My name is Patrick Koffenberg. I am responsible for these shenanigans, and I'm joined, as always, thankfully, finally, again, I am joined by (laughs) the immobile Mike Carbno, the uh, incapacitated Mike Carb no. The immobile as opposed to the mobile. Yes. Mobile. The uh, the, the uh, debilitated <sighs> debilitated Mike Carb yes. uh, I, yeah. sh- Shall I go on? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the last few days, like what, three days, three, four days, three nights? I don't know. I have not been able to work. The first night, I could not walk. And it was, it was frustrating. I had, uh, I I have a really nice cane collection, so I was using a cane. That's good. That's and awesome. Mary on the other side of me to get me to the bathroom if I had to go, and that took a while. That's the but, only reason. That's the only reason you're with Mary, right? She's your, uh, she's yes, your biological. Yeah, she's a, <laughs> your your living cane for you. Yes, so she's awesome. my crutch. Yes, and I'm, <laughs> but, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, good Lord. But. You know, it, it's my back, but mostly what something happened with the neuropathy in my feet. It it went from just being, you know, well, it's, over the last few months, it's been getting worse with the pain and things. But but the other night, it's like all hell broke loose in the nerve pain part of my, my right foot. And my foot swelled up. It's still swollen. And uh, the pain is has been excruciating. It's it's backed off a bit, but uh, um, I thought, okay, we had to go to Walmart today, um, get some last minute Christmas stuff done, and that just about killed me. I'm, I will do my best this evening, folks. Well, and, <laughs> I promise. And you know, but, Mike, um, I I do send sincere thanks to you for being able to 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 muster up the the strength, the strength, you know, to. Uh, <laughs> To join me tonight, you know, because it has been a while since we've we've got yeah. a, an episode out, and I know it is very it means a lot to you to get episodes out on and you know, to both of us to get episodes out consistently because we appreciate and love all of our listeners, right? And you know, we feel bad when we don't get one out. You know, I we jokingly Absolutely. we jokingly missed one. Well, I made it sound like a joke uh, this past weekend because you had to work the last weekend, so we just didn't mm-hmm. have time to do it. And so I was like, "Yep, it's all Mike's fault." You know, yeah, that's and then, right. And then I feel bad, <laughs> and then I feel terrible about it, anyways, because then two <laughs> days later we had plans to meet up to uh, make up for that, and you were basically paralyzed. And yeah, <laughs> it's like, God and damn it. you know, and then when I worked the week this past weekend, like you're saying, and and I had a uh, uh, some just devastating stuff with that as well. I mean, I of course having a hard time working, and and uh, um, and this this new patient that I have. Um, I was with her and she seemed so concerned about me because she was saying how bad a shape I was in and everything. And how, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, she even told me a couple of times, well, why don't you just go sit down for a while? You know, and I don't know if she was getting frustrated and I thought I was doing okay, but you know, I wasn't a lot of pain, but still able to help people. But yet, I, I, my supervisor asked if she should, she could call me. She texted me and asked if she should call me. So I said, yeah, go ahead and call me. And she said that she got a phone call or hospice got a phone call 
from this patient saying that she was concerned for me because I was not able to help her because of my condition, not properly help her, you know, and after, well, 12 years of being a CNA, 10 with, with hospice, I've had many, you know, letters and phone calls of thanks and how grateful they were and, you know, just how great of a job I'm doing and they're all happy. This is the first time that ever happened. And, and that, it just about killed me. Yeah. You said that you got pretty emotional. When you, <sighs> well, and then I was talking to her about it because she brought up the idea of, well, have you thought about going on FMLA? And I said, well, I really haven't, but I know I've got to do something. So, and then when she was telling me about that, then, you know, and I told her, I said, if I can't do my job and I'm starting to, I mean, if somebody is saying that they're concerned because I wasn't able to help them. And if I can't do this job, it would, it would kill me. And then I started getting emotional and, and I'm sure she was like, well, what, 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 what do I do now? He's right. crying on the <laughs> phone with me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but she was great. My supervisor was great. And uh, I just, you know, decided, yes, I'm going to take some FMLA and go from there. And, and that's not as long as my PTO holds up. And that's not uh, fuck my life. Um, that's <laughs> that's that's not FMLA or what, yes, anything, any other yeah. word. That's uh, family medical yes, leave, some yes. assistance or something like that. Right, right. So, but, um, yeah. Well, but yeah. I would be. What? Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. I would be better tonight, after the Walmart thing, if I would have taken Mary's suggestion about when I get to Walmart, use the Walmart go kart. You know, I yes. had other names for it, but I don't want to. No, don't. Yeah, you, you know, don't want to use that on on the hurt air. Hurt anybody's but... feelings. <laughs> yeah, but um, so I was like, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. You know, there's probably a lot of other people that can use it that, you know, that either need it or just just want to ride around. I don't know. <laughs> so, but if I would have taken her advice, I would be in a lot better shape. Yeah. <laughs> but, I just I and think... I didn't bring a cane with me, which I should have. I can just see you, though, like if you decided to take one of those Walmart carts, you were like taking your frustration out on just, you know, innocent passerbys and just yeah. ran them all over down the aisles, <laughs> you know, and taking down the old ladies in the vegetable aisle and just, I don't know, yeah. I can just yep. see you going nuts. You know, just, you know, going from one side to the other down the chip aisle, yes. you know, like Fritos everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at the top of my lungs. <laughs> and then and then I can see you trying to make try trying to turn around and blocking the entire lane because yeah. you're like you're backing up, yep. you're backing forward, you're going forward an inch, you're backing up two inches, you're going forward and yeah. backing up two inches. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That would have happened. Yeah. The old uh I can see that. Austin so, Powers. The Austin thing. Powers thing, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh. Yeah, well, again, but I don't know. Again, Mike, um, I know our listeners appreciate you making the making the effort to join us tonight because you know it's this is a passion of ours, and we missed we missed our we missed talking to everybody. We really do. And absolutely, it's good to see you, um, up and at him as well as you can be doing, Mike. So let's make this right. a good episode. All right, sounds absolutely. like a plan. We you know we the topics tonight are good ones. Um, yeah, if, they are. If I may They're say good. so myself, uh, when we were the alternate Realm podcast, we did cover, um. Very broadly, the uh, the uh, topic subject of shadow people, and has always mm -hmm. been an absolutely fascinating. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Any number of things, ideas, theories, notions, what 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 mm -hmm. have you? Shadow people are absolutely fascinating to me, and they can be kind of creepy. And um, absolutely, as longtime listeners know, ding ding dingy ding ding. I won't I won't make you. Oh, hey, it's right. It's it is within reaching distance. Okay. Yes, I, I keep it within reach. Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're going to, we're going to be diving into shadow people again, and then we're going to do, um, for the final, uh, Mike. Okay. Listeners, what do you, so far since we have, uh, rechristened ourselves as a paranomaly zone, we've made it more streamlined. We've had uh, the topic at hand, and then we've wrapped up the show with what we have been calling one last take. And I'm like, gosh, do we, do we like one last take? Well, I should clarify. Do I like one last take? <laughs> should we change it? <laughs> So we're we're messing around with names. If you guys have any suggestions, we were thinking about like our verdict, the verdict, the final verdict, any number of things. Uh, just because we haven't settled on it, we're gonna still call one last take for tonight, Mike. Um, yeah, sounds good. Our one last take segment. We are going to be talking about the Perrin family hauntings, the uh, infamous slash famous Perrin family hauntings. We're gonna run through those 
uh, very briefly. Uh, Which have, we have had the great pleasure of having the Andrea put on. Thank you very much, Mike, for bringing that up. Yes, uh, speaking of the Alternate Real Podcast, we have had several awesome guests on the show as the Alternate Real Podcast, and we have several awesome guests lined up for the Paranomaly Zone as well. One of them, way back in 2016, was the aforementioned Andrea Perrin. Uh, Bridget and I had the absolute awesome privilege of talking with her, and that was a blast. You can still listen to that. Um, it's still available on podcast feeds, I believe. I'm not sure. I, I spoke with someone at Libsyn, our podcast provider, and I think they might be slowly weaning out the old podcast episodes mm. that were on the Alternate Real podcast feed. But I believe you can still find those. I'm not sure how long, how much longer you can, but you can you can you can definitely go listen to it on YouTube. Um, it's, it was fantastic talking with, with, with Andrea, just a lovely lady and, uh, wow, what a story, what a life. And, uh, I highly encourage you to go check it out right now. And I will say, if you check it out, you'll notice right away that Bridget started the show because we were recording in different houses at the time and my recordings, as Andrea warned us what happened, my recording equipment all decided to die on me the moment before we started recording, and so I was gone for the first 10, 15 minutes. That's right. Yeah. Desperately trying to reset everything, figure everything out while Bridget was talking to Andrea. I had no idea what was going on for the first 10, 15 minutes, but uh, I got in there eventually, and we had a great discussion, so go check that out. But yeah, one last take. The, the parent family hauntings. We're looking forward to it. Mike. Oh, Mike died on me or something. Are you there? I'm here. Oh, I, okay. I was. I, I kind of. You just were mesmerizing me with your. No. With your. Uh, well, I kind of threw it to you there. Speech you, babble. I I threw it to you, and then you didn't say anything. <laughs> you oh, you did. Me. Okay. <laughs> I guess I wasn't paying attention. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> no, no. Sometimes Mike gets mesmerized by my luscious good looks on the other end over oh. here. So that's. I get spacey, and I I I actually. Um, <laughs> Spacey. What was that sound? I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. It's but anyway, um, your medicine. I, I'm blaming it on my gabapentin. There you go. There you go. Now, Mike, let's start talking about the shadow people by talking about your experience with them. You have seen one, and no matter how, no matter how often I've heard this story, um, briefly describe to uh, our listeners what you saw, uh, when you saw it, uh, your locale, the surroundings, any number of things. Just just briefly tell us about your your experience. Yeah, well, it was in the, uh, what was it, the early-ish 80s. I was in the military, base housing, Grand Forks Air Force Base, North Dakota. And uh, it was in the afternoon, it was still daylight out, and I was watching TV in my easy chair, my lounger, my barca, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> sure. And to my left, uh, against the one wall, well, it was front picture window um where the couch is the couch was about i don't know um it was away from the wall because the curtains that were behind was behind it and i had it away from the wall or the window enough so you could easily move the curtains so there was some space back there and uh, i heard something like brush against that couch and i looked over right away and there was like a black shadow of like a head or part of a head. And as soon as I looked over, it ducked behind the couch and I could hear it. I could hear that. And right away I got up and looked over there. And of course there was nothing there. Kids weren't around. Nobody was there. It was just me in the living room by myself, but I heard it and I saw it. That's crazy. And it was, it yeah. was just totally black. You couldn't see through anything. You couldn't make anything no, out, but it, totally dark black. Yep. And it was just, and like, it was, it was solid. It was uh very, very uh, um, smooth edges. It wasn't like misty or anything. It was just like a solid black form. And the fact that you heard it too. Yeah, that, yeah. That adds Definitely something heard to it. it. And that's what made me look over there at first. And because I heard it. And then when I looked over, that's when it's like, it's like, it's like it saw me turning my head to look over there and yeah. duck down to hide. Man, that is crazy. <laughs> Again, no matter how many times I hear that, it just... I get the heebie-jeebies every now and then. I don't know why, because it's... Yeah. We don't yeah. know if they're negative energies. We don't know if they're positive. We don't know if they're neutral. We, you, know, my, you obviously didn't feel anything. Um, I felt nothing bad about it at all. In fact, I went back and sat down, and I 
just started watching TV again, <laughs> like my usual thing that just I your, do. Your usual thing, yeah. I, I yeah. would, I probably would have fainted, uh, screamed. I don't know what I, what I would have done. I, I don't know. You know but I, then you know, like what a uh, what's it a month or so ago in here when I saw that black shadowy thing that went through my dining room. That's right. But that was more misty, cloudy, like. Yeah. Not not a, not a real form. It was just like a mass. Mm-hmm. And that was that was very black and it uh moved pretty quick but you know slow enough to where i could see it going you know through the room right but uh uh and i had no bad feelings from that either you know the the thing is like like with what you saw and what shadow people are generally described as is taking on a definite human form right and that that's clear as day um Again, there's any number of potential explanations for them. We're going to fly through a bunch of them, you know, including some, you know, potentially psychological, medical, any number of reasons, explanations that could be behind these experiences. Uh, I don't know. We don't know. Uh, I definitely tend to believe that they are paranormal in nature. I know Mike does because he's seen the damn things. Mm. And uh, I'm jealous, again, just a wee bit jealous, Mike. But, of course. Uh, yeah, and Mike, again, he's if, if you're new to the show, you'll soon come to the realization that Mike has led a very paranormal life, and he's just very ho-hum about it. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, I saw a black floating mass again in my living room. Who cares? Turn the channel. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, I, I do find it exciting and very interesting, and I I love, you know, experiencing that stuff. I just, I just take it as it comes. Well, some of the expo- uh, potential, air quotes, potential explanations for shadow people mike i'm gonna i'm gonna fire out a few of these and and we're gonna banter back and forth about them okay and kind of share our Mm -hmm. thoughts as to what we believe or do not believe they may or may not be the first one that i want to throw out there is rather simple in nature we're going to stick with all the paranormal aspects first and then we're going to get to the potentially you know psychological or medical reasons or whatever you want to call them okay the first one I want to throw out there is that is that shadow people are simply simply ghosts taking on a darker form. Simple as that. Are they mm-hmm. simply just uh, supernatural in nature in that they are ghosts, as you and I have come to believe in, as what we believe ghosts are? Are they just simply ghosts taking on a shadowy form? What That's you- possible. That, it's, it, that is a great possibility, um, you know, because uh, like I did not feel anything evil about it. So uh, it's not like it was a demon or anything that I saw. It could it have been a just a simple spectral being. I, I think so. And the reason that some, you know, some who do believe that shadow people are simply ghosts in a darker form the reason they believe that is because they are clinging to this explanation that these particular ghosts are trapped in this realm of existence. They're trapped in this plane of existence. And they, they essentially don't, don't know, well, they, they, they don't know their whereabouts and they don't know where to go. They don't know who to seek out. I'm not necessarily sure why that would make them darker in nature dark, or darker mm. in visual form, but essentially they're like a sad, trapped ghost, Mike. And that's yeah. a shadow person. I, mm-hmm. I, my, my hands are up on that one. What do you think? <sighs> it's, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. To, <laughs> but it's possible. That's why we're here. We're talking. We about also this. hear of stories of uh, very sad, weeping, wailing ghosts that are. Just a pure white form of a being, also. Yeah, that's very true. So, I don't know. You know, it's it could go either way. It could go any way. You know, either way. I mean, it's uh, along the lines of how, for whatever reason, negative things are always visualized or described as being physically darker. You know, in their appearance, whether it's sadness or negativity or what have you. You know, so. So I guess that's kind of if you see a dark shadow, you you automatically assume that it's right. there's something wrong going on over there for whatever the dark reason. Entity, the dark, yeah. I mean, which is silly when you think about it, but yeah, you know, 
you know, black is just simply the lack of the lack of color, right? That's essentially what is sure. that, that's what it's described as. And so, if this doesn't have any form, any color whatsoever, therefore, it's I don't know. I guess there's no living es- essence there. There's no positive es- essence. I don't know. It's it's the negative to the positive, right? Like, uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I don't know. That's as far as I can go with that one. How about this one though? Um, this one I'm fascinated with, Mike. Shadow people as time traveling beings going in and mm-hmm. out of dimensions. Yeah, dimensional. What do you? Th- I I love mm. that one. You know, either they could literally be time traveling, or they are always, or there's no such thing as time, which we've talked about before. You know, there really isn't. You know, but um. They are, they simply, they're slipping through the dimensions every now and then, Mike, you know, they, mm-hmm. we're sitting here right now and a, whoop, over to the right of us. Also, we see a, a glimpse of something in our peripheral. That's actually like a, a slip in the, in the, um, I don't know, the space time continuum, I guess. Right. I, I did read a story one time. I, it was a, a long time ago that, uh, talked about a um, guy that was in this room and, uh, he said that he witnessed like all of a sudden, like something wavery in, in, in the air, like something was happening. It was almost like a, um, like a doorway shaped form of the air, just kind of like, like what, a uh, the sun on a hot highway, when you're driving, you okay, see that. Sure. Sure. So kind of like the, like a mirage looking type right. thing kind of, okay. um, said so he's seen something like that and he saw like this black form, like a shadow person um come through that like it was an open portal like an open doorway or something really and it was huge it was not like a human being it was so monstrously huge but shaped like a human and he was completely terrified by this and i I can't remember the whole story about what happened while it was there but when it left it like backed its way into this void that it came in from and disappeared and then the doorway went away as well wow now to me that sounds like that could definitely be a portal from another dimension opening up with something coming through right well and you have experience with portals as well well you you think that you may have had experience with portals and one of your older uh humble abodes you thought that perhaps um any number of spirits slash energies were coming in and out of uh, existence into your little house there, Mike, where we got our yeah. It's Debbie EVP. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, there are so many different things that happened there. It seemed like that of different, you know, there was a childlike things like the fingerprints on the mirror or yeah. um, like the, the, the spirit of the man that was seen or hearing somebody coughing out in the kitchen when there's nobody there. Uh, getting the the EVP of the woman's voice. It's like there are so many different entities in and out, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, it, it could be, you know, a portal type somewhere in there that these different entities were coming through. No. Also, we, uh, we have a listener that uh, we've been kind of conversing with in the last few days about where she says that she feels there's a portal in her house where she sees things come in and out. Have you, yes, you noticed that's that on, right. on Twitter? Yet? That is right. That's right. Um, yeah, you had some uh, terrific conversations with her via the, via the twit. Yeah. Um, and was... um, yeah, we were just talking about it a little bit and, and uh, uh, I got the strong feeling all of a sudden when I was, you know, we were talking about it a little bit that I told her to watch for, for a man. Yes. <laughs> Uh oh, Mike! Now Mike's dog is deciding to go nuts. Now, <laughs> finally realized it's podcast time, so I better start barking. <laughs> well, your microphone's off, Mike. You gotta turn it back on. Yeah. Oh no! It's, on. it's oh, I can barely hear you now. Yeah, that figures. Yeah, it figures. <laughs> tap tap tap. Now? Nope, can't hear you. One second. Oh, All right. Well, we had to pause briefly there. It was it yeah. Was, it was seamless, but Mike's microphone decided to stop yeah, working. Yeah, I was, need a new power cord. I think. Or is it a shadow person messing with you? Yeah, it could be. But you were, but as you said, you know, you were uh, conversing with an awesome listener and and Patreon supporter, uh, Ness Ortiz. Thank you so much, Ness. Shout out to Ness. Go follow her on 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 Twitter. You can just go find her. Awesome, awesome friend of ours. 
and and you were conversing with her. She's been having some very interesting con- uh, yeah. experiences at her different, house. Uh, different beings, uh, spirits coming in and out of a portal that she believes yeah. is in her home. Um, and then I got this strong feeling of, uh, and I told her to watch for a man coming through wearing a, a suit. I can't remember exactly how I described it to her, but um, she said that it's funny that I should mention that because she does see, she has seen a man dressed in a suit with like a top hat on. I didn't see or feel the top hat, but I did like the man with uh with a suit. So I don't mm-hmm. know if there's any kind of a, you know, uh, connection there or not, but you know, when you but think yeah. about when you, this thought just popped in my brain, Mike, when you think about, you know, interdimensional beings. Now, when I throw that phrase out to you, do you think about individuals such as you or I that happen to be getting passed through slipping into and out of dimensions and we are being interpreted visually by those in and out of these dimensions as simply black black shadowy figures but we are actually they look like you or I or anybody else out there or are they beings that exist at all times in between dimensions they are you know, they're some sort of astral entity that only exists in between the veil mike mm, that's intriguing what do you think and about that maybe they uh exist in between and they keep popping in and out of doors or like that's that's what they do that's their existence is doing that yeah or maybe they're they're trapped and they're trying to find their way home like uh, well like the show what sliders or something like that you know, ever it, watch that? <laughs> I, I have not actually. No, I have oh, not. Great, um, great show. You know, I every time we hear about something being potentially trapped, I immediately start feeling sad. You know, you know, or I, I, I mean, I don't. I, I let me rephrase it. I don't feel sad, but I feel sad for them if that is right. actually the case. Sure. Know? And it's it's well, it'd be a horrible existence. Yeah, and you know, and then why are they trapped? Why are some doomed to be trapped in between? dimensions and yeah. and lost you know i mean there's any number of possible explanations for that and that's that makes maybe them... it's their own personal hell maybe that is hell right you know yeah, and you know that, they that's terrifying they they're able to peek through in different dimensions only for a moment feeling that they're all of a sudden they're oh. they're free but then they're sucked back oh in. my gosh mike listen that gave me the <laughs> chills that you said that yeah it's like just being teased like it, we're, yeah. we're gonna let you see what it's like out there but nope just only for a yeah. moment, and then we're bringing you right back in here. Yeah, but you know there are times probably probably with that that would happen, like where uh, 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 if that were the case, there would be a like a, a shadow person or an entity that is trapped, and then coming through a portal, you know, to be teased by that, and ending up coming out into a Tiny Tim uh, <laughs> concert, and then. And then that, then it freely and willfully, yeah. Then it decides puts itself back, yes, into its own hell. <laughs> so you know there is that possibility too. Yeah, yeah. No, their their immediate reaction upon seeing Tiny Tim. Ow! Yeah. Ow! Ow! I don't know. Ow! <laughs> tiptoe through the tulip. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. thank you. But anyway, Here yes. Go. But you know. Ooh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, <laughs> uh anyway and I, I just i'm fascinated by shadow people and the idea the time oh, tra- yeah. the time traveling aspect is it's really hard to wrap your mind around it it, it is. is um and we're not physicists we're not Michio Kaku. Oh, no <laughs> you know? we're not the kakus we're not the kakus now, how about this idea mike i know you'll i know i know you'll find this one intriguing because i do okay. and i know it's another passion of yours Shadow people, Mike, are aliens. Oh, that's uh, absolutely a possibility. Now, how do you feel about that possibility? How strong of a possibility? Okay, uh, I should ask you after every time we did this. So far, we've talked about shadow beings, shadow people, as being simply ghosts in a darker physical form for whatever reason, because may- maybe they're lost in this plane of existence. Therefore, they take on a darker uh, visualization for whatever reason. 
They are time-traveling beings caught in between dimensions. They are aliens. I think that's all we've covered so far. What? Mm-hmm. Which one do you buy the most <sighs> of the three that we've talked about so far? Which one's which one strikes a card with you? Mm. <clears throat> Time traveling entities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I I really like that. But then if they're entities and if they're in the spirit world, uh, it's, uh, can you put ghosts and spirits in with time travel because i think in the beyond where where the spirit world there is no time or does that make it possible to travel to any time right you know what i mean because there is no construct of time there is nothing right so you can be anywhere at at any time at any time anywhere and everywhere at all (sighs) times yeah I think I just got a hernia. hernia. <laughs> I got a brain hernia. Thinking about that, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, <laughs> got a bulge out the back of my head that needs fixing. Uh, beastly <laughs> bulgy bulge. <laughs> so uh, how about the idea about aliens, though, Mike? I mean, are, do you feel strongly sure. about that? Um, there's a, a lot of these. Okay, let's, let's just get it out of there. A lot of people who claim to have seen shadow people do say that they had they had a very negative feeling about a very negative experience right and so a lot of these descriptions of uh, accounts involving shadow people have negative connotations to it so when it comes to aliens being the explanation for shadow people mike it is due to alien abduction victims being the ones who are well, it's not due to that, but I'm saying the alien abductees being a possible explanation for shadow people encounters. Hmm. Your thoughts. So, <laughs> so are you saying that the shadow beings in that case are abducted humans? No. Or they are the aliens coming through to get that to ab- ab- abduct the abductees? Yes, the latter. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I've never thought of that before. It sucked you right in the black hole. Are you serious that you've never thought about that before? Or are you joking? I, I no, I, I really haven't. Um, hmm. Yeah, I like that. Well, I mean, but your your case, if that was a shadow person, you obviously weren't abducted by an alien. At least you don't think you were. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Did you check your butthole afterward? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, check the butthole in the butthole. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be uh, vulgar there, but uh, you know, yeah, I'm just getting to the point. You know, so. uh, you got rid of that uh, soundbite. Yeah, I'm you? never playing that again. I got yeah, grossed. Yeah. I got grossed out by that guy in the butthole. It was, it was hilarious for about a minute, but then I realized yeah. that it was disturbing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we we grew up a little bit since then. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. much, but a little bit. Yeah. Just a wee bit. Yeah, in case you know. This was a, a alternate realm podcast episode. You know, we do like to in, incorporate a lot of humor into our shows, and haven't really. Oh, done that'll it. never end unless oh, no. unless we get unless we have a petition yeah. against us from all the listeners saying, "Scratch the humor." Yeah, right. And I don't. Think the the humor happen. shall continue. Yes, and it, lot- that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here to 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 uh, uh, lessen. The the dryness and the stiffness. What the hell are you of, saying? Of you, Patrick. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> See, Fine. funny, funny, All funny. Right. I'm being funny. Yeah, sure, sure, whatever. <laughs> You're being something. I don't know if it's funny, but uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, that the the in the butthole thing is. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a go look him up on YouTube if you want to be yeah. disturbed. It's a crazy preacher from back in the day who's basically going on a horrible anti. Um, homosexuality rants yeah. and it's it's awful and it, 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 it was just, and it was the thing about it too is it was horrible that we even used it I because know. it gave this 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 crazy man a, 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 a you know a voice on our show yeah. saying what he was saying about yeah. I know ne- we never said who it was. We didn't, you know, we didn't give them any publicity other than I just used. No, the, well, I that's used right. The, we don't. Yeah. I used the sound bite just because, like I said, it was funny to me for about 30 seconds. And then I was like, <laughs> no, never again. Never again. So, yeah, we got a few uh, episode plays out of it, though. Was it? I thought I only did it once. I think so. But the one we did one, uh, probably the first one, it was probably overplayed, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so aliens, alien abductors as an explanation for shadow people. So. You know, that kind of goes against people who 
experience them and they're they're uh, I guess conscious all the time and it's a very there it's it's a lucid experience at the least where they see something and it's at, you know whether it's the corner of their eye or it's it's in the in the corner of their room you know it doesn't really lend itself to the the you know the classic alien abduction stories right. you know where there's time you know lost time and there's you know they they have they only have glimpses of recollections through hypnosis or what you know what have you any number yeah. of things you know so that i don't i personally don't buy shadow people as being alien abductors right. it, that, it's it's an interesting theory though but you know there are probably um uh people and ways of of alien abduction that happen that we have no idea well about. very true very true of course you know, of course of course so it's like somebody could be sitting on the toilet and that's a that's a prime time for some <laughs> alien species to yeah you know abduct mm. them I, I don't know it's just a, an example <clears throat> Um, other other examples, Mike. Uh, are they are they dark energies? Are they dark entities? Are they demonic in nature? Are they are they from the underworld, Mike? Are they coming? You know, from I don't know where exactly the underworld would be. Right. You know, uh, but are they coming from the the depths of hell to uh, tear us? You know, to bring us down with them? You know, uh, again, that goes against experiences like yours nothing right. negative at all um, absolutely not yeah. but you know there's how many however many tens of thousands of the of these experiences hundreds of thousands throughout the history of man they're all going to be different in, in some way right so it, what could mean something to somebody means something totally different to another absolutely and, yeah I, I mean we get that yeah i mean and just the fact that they're that these shadow people are are just are black you know, and yeah. black is associated with with evil and yes and uh and just that alone uh the psyche could take that as automatically being evil mm -hmm. oh of course um, of course you know uh i don't know have have we have we ever read of any accounts of shadow people being harmful or causing damage or death or or physical mm -hmm. harm i can't recall i mean i haven't read everything but anything that i've read hasn't pointed to that but that doesn't mean that hasn't happened another possibility mike and it's kind of similar to how a lot of people will will a lot of people buy into the notion of poltergeist activity being brought up brought upon by psychic energy uh or you know um the the mind the power of the mind being able to conjure up this physical activity around them that's what a lot of people think is an explanation for poltergeists and guess what a lot of people think shadow people are simply what are labeled as psychic attacks psych psychic conjurings brought right. upon people bringing these visions upon themselves through any number mm. of means uh are they conjured up simply from our mind mike physically i mean they might physically be there but, Absolutely, but we are creating them. What do you think? The mind that? is more powerful than what we know. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, yeah. you hear about well, we only use ten percent of our mind. Uh, I have also read that that's not true, but we don't understand our own minds, and they've been in our brain case for since we've been born. Uh, you know, <laughs> brain case. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget your put brain a handle case. on it and put a little lock right. and take yourself to tahiti or something <laughs> i don't know geez but anyway yeah but you know what i'm saying we we don't even know our own minds and and or our, how our brain functions mm -hmm. um uh do neuro does the neurosciences do they know everything about the brain and how it works and what it can do you know a lot more than probably anybody else but not a hundred percent maybe mm -hmm. there's a mystery that's always going to be there i that think we do not understand no well, i i agree 100 about how our minds work i agree 195 percent with what you just said and i do believe there is a chance that a percentage of these encounters 
are brought about by the, our minds themselves. I Absolutely. Mean, how, how can you not? How can you not Absolutely. believe yep. that? I mean, even to the point of it being physical. You know, even, Absolutely. Like, Mike, I'm not saying that's what you did, but to, to, the, right. point of, to the point of hearing it moving around, yeah. you know, you could be doing that, that to that, yourself. Yeah, that throws a, a different uh, thing into it. But but now, like this black cloud that I saw in my dining room a month or so ago. Did I see that? I looked right at it, yeah. watched it move. Mm-hmm. But did I see it? Or was it my uh, almost 60-year-old uh, eyeballs with photos? Man. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, well, was it was it ecto mist or does Mike need another eye appointment? You no know? floater. <laughs> you know? okay. Yeah, I, you know, that's why you know you do have to question what you see and what you experience. But, um, but sometimes you, when you experience something, you have to just go with it at the same time. You oh, have sure. to like, yes, I believe this really happened. Mm-hmm. You know, get take what your gut tells you, or you know, if you have questions think it through did i what did i see and 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 try to figure it out okay mike uh, we have so much to dive into are you good for a time traveling excursion or do you want to finish this segment um i'm good at whatever you want to do well because i do have a lot i want to di- dive into here so let's yeah. do a brief time traveling excursion okay. um then we will uh, it'll be seamless to the listeners yeah, patrick's got to go potty uh yeah <laughs> Usually it's Mike who has to, and uh, yeah, but the doggies are kind of whimpering at my feet too, so okay. I'm going to let them outside. And we are, we will time travel. Hold on, boys and girls, we shall be all right back. And we have returned from yet another successful time traveling excursion. Okay, Mike, some potential explanations for shadow people that are not otherworldly or supernatural in nature okay so okay it's only fair we have to throw we have to discuss this briefly as well we've talked Mm -hmm. about sleep paralysis as being a potential explanation for uh, any number of supernatural paranormal occurrences the night the you know night hags yeah um even alien abduction crying out loud absolutely that can be a answer for a lot of things yeah demonic possession of all things you know (laughs) yeah a number of shadow people type you know shadow type people the hat man you know any sort of number of things sleep paralysis sleep deprivation substance abuse simply a mistake from our peripheral vision Mm-hmm. What do you think about any of those right now, Mike? Obviously, they yeah. all could be they're they're all legit for any number Absolutely. Of, of cases. But Absolutely. are they but do they uh account for all of them? I dare say no. It it, it can account for everything. Um you know, especially when there are things that happen that have that leave um a physical trace. I mean, you know, that does happen, and that is not from the mind or or uh you know, it's there. It, there's so many different things that could could cause it, mm-hmm. and it, but you, how can we know? How can we know? How can we figure out if it's yeah, I hear you know you. something like that or uh, how can you find? There's no way of defining an, an exact exa- percentage of what exactly. is what is this and what is that. Right now, the idea of of shadow people being simply glimpses caught in our peripheral vision, that's. I mean, okay, we've all thought we've caught glimpses of something at any number of times in our lives, mm-hmm. you know, throughout our lives. You know, it's like, well, you think you see something in the corner of your eye, you know. I, that, and you look and there's nothing there. You look and there's nothing there. Was that a yeah. shadow person? Well, chances are no. I mean, of course, we, we get that. Uh, but as as a explanation, I'm, I'm doing the air quotes again for explanation for all shadow people. No, it's not. They're no, not absolutely. all just mistakes caused by human error i mean there there's legitimacy there there are accounts that you you just can't can't simply toss aside as well you thought you saw, you're right. seeing things you're seeing literally shadows like no yeah i'm not you know there's something that was a hell of a lot more defined a hell of a lot more clear than something out of the corner of my eye right and you have to take in faith in what you feel you saw and how it you you how what you what how it makes you feel i mean as far as uh 
deciding if it's if it's real or if it's just uh something in your imagination mm -hmm. you know uh um how strongly did it affect you was it something that was so such a glancing thing that you you barely even noticed it but it's like boy there was something there but when you looked it wasn't mm -hmm. you know um you know what i mean oh uh, absolutely i do yeah now, one thing I want to talk about briefly, Mike, is the idea of substance use slash abuse as right. being the root cause for all of these. Yeah, we get it. I mean, we know <laughs> you're hammered on something, you're going to see things that aren't there. I mean, it just well, mind altering that, uh, yes. like whether it's psychedelics or whatever that can mm -hmm. uh, put you in a different world that you, in your mind, you were really there. Yeah. And now, Mike, you know, this, this, I mean, this this could be a sensitive topic. I don't I don't feel that it is, but you know, who's to say that? Okay, I okay. Take a step back, Patrick. I, I believe it was William Blake, the philosopher, Mike, <laughs> um, or not philosopher? Was he? Was he, I don't remember what the hell he was. Was he a writer or poet? I don't remember. Um, I think a school janitor. Was he a school janitor? Yeah, I knew Bill Blake. Yeah, good old Bill Blake, the janitor. Um, Bill Blake, the broom pusher. <laughs> <laughs> Put sawdust down where the kids puked. So, I, I, but, you know, I, I remember him being one of Jim Morrison's favorite quotes because he, he coined the phrase, you know, when the doors of perceptions are, when the doors of perception are cleansed, everything will appear to, appear to man as it is, which is infinite. And, and we all know that the doors, especially Jim, well, basically Jim, love to experiment with hallucinogenics drugs of, of any and all sorts because he truly believed at well, definitely at first they were not just him but a lot of people in that generation Mike truly believed a lot of people <laughs> that they were uh, and they were enlightening themselves by doing this sure. they were opening themselves to the spirit world okay yeah. So and at the same time, there's no reason it can't be fun. Well, there you go. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, so so who's to say, and I am not pro or con anything here, but who's to say that if you're using some sort of substance, it doesn't literal, it doesn't actually um, help you uh, enter that spiritual realm where you wouldn't be, wouldn't have been able to when you're sober, essentially, you know, you're totally, you're, you're, you've opened up, you've loosened up as much as you possibly can. Mike, you always say that Patrick, you're, you're too logical. You're blocking yourself. So you're, you're opening, you're, you're closing yourself to, to these potential paranormal experiences. So I guess what I'm saying, who's to say that because you are taking something at the moment that what you saw isn't still real. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it can be like a, um, a key opening a door that's real every sense of the of yeah. every sense of it is real um i like i like you know I like that that sounded good yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's like uh um it's like the parts of our brain that we don't realize what it is or how it works there's something that needs just a little bit of a a twist where just a little if it's push just a little put it's had a little bit of a push you know worlds will be open dimensions will be open to you mm -hmm. um beings will be open to you uh to experience it doesn't mean that's not real it doesn't mean that it's hallucin hallucinogenic right right you know it it could mean that uh um that uh it's it, it's the opening it's the key and Part again, you know, we're making it clear we're not being pro anything here. We're not right, saying, exactly. We're not saying go drop acid, boys and girls. You know, we're not right. saying that. Good lord, we're not saying that. Someday but, I wouldn't mind trying a good shroom, though. Well, there you go, Mike. Yeah, yeah you know, I'll get like a two liter bottle of coke and a box of macaroni and cheese and a and a shroom. <laughs> What? And I think I'd I, give me an afternoon of that. <laughs> I just like usually <laughs> usually hear people say, you know, we're you know we're gonna do shrooms, and Mike just has one individual. I'm gonna take a shroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what it takes. I've never done it. <laughs> I know. That just sounded funny. To you me know, it's it's like uh, it's like the the Native American uh, natives that uh, you know the peyote yes. and, yes. and everything. That's a spiritual thing. It is because they know what it is. They realize yes. what it can do. Yes, and they realize what the spirituality of it yes you know the will, the, the knowledge the uh, the the dimensions the the learning i want to say the trip you can take but i don't mean that as 
taking like a drug trip Not. or anything. It's like, mm-hmm. but you know, it, it, you know, there are people in cultures that know how to use these things legitimately use these things. Absolutely. No, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, that's another great point. And you know, uh, uh, other potential medical explanation, Mike's Mike are unfortunately people who suffer from schizophrenia People suffer from bipolar disorders, any number of hallucinations bought, brought upon by medical conditions, medical ailments, uh, and you know. And finally, there has been scientific evidence that, and I wrote this down because I want to make sure I got this right. When the left temporal parietal lobe junction, the left temporal parietal lobe junction, is stimulated by however means, Mike, it can create. The physical illusion of essentially you're hallucinating, you're seeing what appears to be a shadow person. I'm going to spare all the details, mm-hmm. all the boring details on that one. So, I mean, yeah, of course, of course you can trigger it. Of course science can, can you know, uh, manifest its own hallucinations. We get it. You know, we're going to jab, right. we're going to jab you, we're going to stimulate your, your brain right there and you're going to see something in five seconds. Yeah, we get it. But when you're sitting on your couch like Mike was one day and all of a sudden something, he hears something behind the couch... You know, yeah. and you know, and he sees a head pop up behind the couch. Was your was your left temporal parietal lobe being stimulated at that time? You didn't realize it. I mean, I guess I don't Let's know. See, Mike. well, I was stroking myself in certain Ooh, area. Oh wow! Time. Okay, that's <laughs> no. it. Yeah. Okay. Too much. No, just kidding. TMI. I was just watching TV. <laughs> TMI. Oh lord. No, I was not. Well, <sighs> but well, you know, all of this stuff, you know, like like Jack Black when he had spent the. Afternoon in the forest with Bigfoot. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> no, I haven't. What the hell oh are you talking God. about? It's, I can't remember. I think it was from a movie. But you know, I'm a I'm a big Jack Black fan. The guy is a nut. I love him. But there's something where he he ate some mushrooms and he he uh, actually spent the day with Bigfoot in the forest. And it's like Bigfoot was his dad. <laughs> <laughs> it was really? absolutely just hilarious. Oh but gosh. anyway, so. Hmm. So it's like I have to find that and send it to you a link or something. Instead of Albert Osman being kidnapped by Bigfoot, it was Jack Black just chilling with his just, Bigfoot yeah, dad. chilling and becoming Bigfoot's <laughs> baby. <laughs> well, you know, uh, there's so much to talk about when it comes to shadow people, Mike. But you know, we are on a on on a time limit here, right. a, a self a self uh, contained time limit because we want to make sure we have enough time for uh, the our one last take on the parent family exactly. hauntings. Well, uh, I guess, Mike, your final thoughts on shadow people. I mean, I know, mm. I know you believe in them. I know you believe they exist, and I think that you said that you you tend to believe that they are time traveling entities. That's the one that kind of clings, sticks to you. It does the most. I definitely believe they are real. Uh, I've never experienced one. I'm not sure if I want to, but uh, you, you need know, to. I, yeah, I know it'd be it would be utterly fascinating and mind changing or mind altering and life changing, I should say. Right, right. Um, well, your you know final words on shadow people, Mike, before we move on to the parent family hauntings. I mean, it's utterly fascinating. Yeah, I mean, if somebody experiences these these things, just take it as it comes. Um, just keep a level head and. Uh, yeah, go with it. You know, right? Yeah, and and you know, use your own gut instincts if you what you may have seen is real um i don't know i i just know that they're real because i have experienced it and i know yeah. i've experienced it yeah not an imaginary thing for me and of course i have to be careful when i say stuff like go with it because you never know there are listeners out there saying oh my gosh this this, this podcast host is <laughs> you know say if you come across a black dark demonic entity just go with it i'm not yeah. saying that people i'm just, just- I'm, just go hug it. Just go hug it. No. <laughs> um, I think Mike knows what I'm trying to say, and I believe our listeners know what I am tr- what I mean by right. just go with it. You know, it's it, it's there, so um, just kind of be as positive about it as you can, yeah. I guess. Uh, terrifying or not, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. If I saw one right now, I'd probably be creeped out, Mike, but it'd be, uh, well, it'd it, be it, something. Well, it can be a very terrifying thing. And to, to be honest with you, with all these things that I have experienced that I know are real because I have experienced them without a doubt in my mind. Yeah. Why doesn't, why do they not freak me out? Why did, why is the the time that I did see a a shadow person, this black figure, the black head, whatever you want to call it. 
why did I not freak out yeah. and go, I have no idea. Is is I can't say that it's just because I've experienced so much or if it is or not, I don't know, but I, I don't know. Why do I not freak out on these things more than what I have? I don't understand that either. You're just, you're dead in the soul. Right? <laughs> I'm dead inside. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've been dead inside since a child. Hey, if, I, if, if any of our <laughs> listeners have any ideas or, or theories as to what um, shadow people are, please send them, send them our way. Absolutely. We, we'd love to hear from Because we don't know. Them. Yeah. No, we're, yeah, abs- we're, we're here just to talk about crazy yeah. stuff, you know, and share our opinions and our, and our own silly little beliefs, you know, our two cents and. Yeah, we want everything to we, the same. Everything we talk about and discuss. I mean, it, it is uh we do it with questions and, and uh, uncertainty. Yes, yes. Because we don't have the answers. No, and we've never claimed to have the answers ever. Yeah. Ever. So I want to make why that perfectly clear. Us <laughs> us with all the listeners, if we can figure things out, come to a good uh conclusion, then let's do that. All right, Mike, it's time for one last take, okay? For, the, for this episode, we're going to continue calling it One Last Take until we can settle on a different name, if we ever do, okay? <laughs> right. But One Last Take is the segment, the closing segment of the show where we bring up any number of uh, what we find to be utterly intriguing, fascinating, cool, paranormal topics, and we discuss them briefly, and then we basically tell you at the end, give you our, our thumbs up, our thumbs down, whether we're believers or non-believers in such stories. Mm-hmm. That's basically the gist of it. We're talking about the Perrin family hauntings. And for those who aren't familiar, and if you're listening to this podcast, you are familiar with the Perrin family. Uh, of course, the, the Conjuring movies, the first one based on the, the, the Perrin family's experiences in their Rhode Island home back in the 1970s, the terrifying hauntings. Well, p- portrayed as terrifying hauntings in the Conjuring movie that they experienced and went through. And uh, so many movies and sequels to the movies have been made from this. Yes, yes, not necessarily involving the parent family, but the right. the um the but the, uh, the 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 first movie, the first Conjuring film, heavily revolved. Well, it was it was it was revolved around their experiences in that house. Uh, this house was built back in like 1690s. Hold on, I have to look at my notes, Mike. 16, 1693, the house was built. Man, mm. I, you look, I, it's creepy as hell, but God, I would love to visit this freaking place, man. Oh, it's, absolutely. What a house. 1693, Mike. And I thought my house, 1882, was old. <laughs> <laughs> Got nothing on this one, my friend. <laughs> yep. Wow. Uh, again, as, as we're uh, on a time... Well, we got a little bit of time here, so we, yeah. we can we can uh, dilly dally a little bit and give you some backstory here. We'll keep it as brief as possible. Well, anyways, back in nineteen seventy slash seventy one, Roger and Carolyn Perrin. Nineteen seventy, actually. Oh, it, yeah. Okay, I had seventy where Ed and Lorraine were there, but I could be wrong. I think you are wrong. Um, <laughs> No, it was uh, 1970 slash 1971. It was when Roger and Carolyn Perrin, along with their children, Andrea, Nancy, Christine, Cynthia, and April, Cynthia and April, moved into their Harrisville, Rhode Island house, the famous, infamous Rhode Island house, the Conjuring House, built in 19 or 1693. They moved into it in 1971, 1970, whichever one that's got. I can't exact. I can't find the exact date. So we'll go with you when you said 1970, Mike. Now, long story short, they basically started experiencing shit the moment they moved in there <laughs> mm-hmm. but but it started started up pretty mellow well and we want we we want to make this perfectly clear the conjuring movie utterly and eh, without a doubt focused on the terrifying aspects of the house mm-hmm. that wasn't it they had wonderful experiences in that house terrific paranormal experiences in that house. You listen to Andrea Perrin and her several interviews that she's been conducting since the movies and her books came out, you know, over a decade ago. She says that there was over at least nine spirits living in that house and their personalities ranged. They're basically like human personalities. They range from right. assholes to wonderful people, yep. you know, and there's particularly one that was pure evil uh, that we'll get to in a second here. Uh, they experienced they started experiencing odd things the moment they moved in. 
uh, the children would feel, you know, pricks on them. They'd be, you know, felt like they were being grabbed, touched. Um, <laughs> my, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> that sounded terrible. They start feeling. <laughs> just rubbing, <laughs> rubbing all over. <laughs> I didn't realize I said that. Anyway. <laughs> Shit. I've uh, been rubbed. Here's a, yeah, the first the first time I, I first time I felt the prick. Ow. Ah, here's the prick. Ow. Another prick. Ah, god damn it. Uh, that was terrible. Hey honey, Andrew has been rubbed again. Yeah, by the prick. <laughs> uh, All right. Anyway. Sorry. sorry. Carry on. Yeah, the, the first time I felt the prick, all I heard was uh No, 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 no. I don't know why, I heard that one. <laughs> yep. but um, mm. anyways, yeah, that was terrible. I didn't mean to say that, but uh, <laughs> God damn it, Mike! Now you threw. I'm totally off kilter. Now. <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I shouldn't. <sighs> I shouldn't have said that. I should not. I. I shan't have said that. <laughs> yeah, not with me around. <laughs> no. All right. Okay. Right, okay. Oh shit. And of course, like nothing, Patrick, you're. All right, I'm sorry. We're back there. I had I had to take a pause there. That was a, that was an awkward pause. I think a pause in the middle of Mike saying my name or you, something. But that was man. That was, and you were saying that you were so flustered you couldn't even hit the pause. I button. couldn't even hit the pause button correctly. <laughs> man, that was bad. Uh, yeah, I tried not to laugh. No, yeah, that was it. Was, it was terrible. Anyways, <clears throat> so that that was a waste of time a little bit, but. Um, <sighs> Again, go back and listen to the Alternate Raw podcast list uh, interview with Andrea Perrin. I mean, she is such a wonderful storyteller, and we highly encourage you to buy her books, House of Darkness, House of Light, uh, three-book trilogy. Obviously, it'd be a three-book if it was a trilogy. Um, detailing their, their, their experiences there at the house, the time they lived there, and afterwards. Now, Andrea, according to Andrea... She was very proud to be involved with the the making of the movie, The Conjuring. Uh, Mike mentioned Ed and, and and Lorraine Warren. I believe he did briefly. Yes. Uh, Lorraine was actually a consultant on the set of the making of the movie. But we have to make it clear here that Andrea, as proud as she is of the movie and as happy as she is by its success and bringing their story to the forefront, she herself says that the movie is 95% fictionalized and about 5% true. Yeah, which is, you know, typical. Typical. But it's non-typical, atypical, in the fact that she says the movie, aside from focusing just solely on the negative aspects of it, didn't give the didn't give those negative aspects the justice as to how terrible they actually were. Some of the experiences mm. that they did go through. Mm-hmm. There, it was all you know. Uh, it's basically like uh, you think that was bad, and what you saw in the movie, uh, go read the book type thing. Right. Again, we have to be clear though. Nine spirits. This is according to to Andrea. Nine separate spirits were to be were believed to be residing in that house or in that dimension, however you want to describe it. And. The majority of them, Mike, were positive. She had positive experiences. Their family had experiences, positive experiences. Particularly, particularly her younger sister Cynthia had positive experiences with um, a, an entity in the house, a younger entity. Um, and so it, it's it's like you said, Mike. It's typical classic Hollywood slash Holly mm-hmm. weird. You know, really going for the gore, the guts, and the you know the blood and all that stuff. Yeah. And it, it worked for them. It made millions. It was a huge hit. And it was a good movie. It was creepy. It was scary. It was well done. One thing we have to clarify, the movie, the movie's antagonist, I should say, was the supposed spirit of one Bathsheba Sherman, who mm. was a neighbor living on the same, you know, it was a, it was a neighbor of the family residing there in the 1800s way back in the day she got a really really bad rap she had a rap in her lifetime she had a worse rap in her in her death and that Mm. bad rap was emphasized even more by the movie essentially lorraine warren is the one who 
upon when her and Ed first entered this house, Mike, when they first uh, started hearing about this, these experiences this family was going through. They sought them out. The, the mother did not seek them out, by the way, which is how it was portrayed in the movie. That wasn't correct. They sought out the parent family. Lorraine immediately named an entity slash spirit, called her Bathsheba when she walked in there. Mm-hmm. Picked up on her right away. Picked up on her right away. But unfortunately, again, this is according to Andrea and the family, is that she wouldn't let that go. And both her, Lorraine and Ed focused on Bathsheba. And basically, long story short, too late, and I apologize for that. They said they believed that this negative entity, Bathsheba, was responsible for all the terrible account, uh, terrible occurrences that are going on in the house. And that simply is not true, according to Andrea. So we get that out of the way. Mm-hmm. Andrea believes the negative spirit in there was a woman who had actually hung herself centuries ago in the, in the, the barnyard, the barn house, I should say. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Arnold was her name. And she's the one that, she, that spirit is the one that Andrea believes was attacking and haunting her house in the negative, horribly terrifying way, like attacking her mother and, you know, and any, just a lot of, uh, yeah. Creepy doesn't do it justice, okay? Right. Now, now, again, Bathsheba was not the reason behind the negative occurrences. I'm repeating myself, I realize that. They believe that this Miss Arnold, who hung herself in 1797, is the re- Kind of an angry spirit. The angry, sad spirit. And a lost. Spirit. Yeah. And Andrea, in particular, believes that Spirits who die a tragic death, aka you know, such as suicide, right? They sadly don't realize that they're dead, and mm. they are trapped. And they are there's that word again, Mike, trapped. And I I can imagine that they are not happy in death, just as they were unhappy. In Absolutely, life. it does carry over. And so you can just imagine. If you are unhappy and you are trapped, you don't realize you are dead and all of a sudden someone's living in your house. I mean, <laughs> what are you going right, to do? Exactly. I mean, it sounds crazy when I put it like that, but I, I think you get my point. It makes sense. It does. Uh, again, s- several of the spirits who were uh, identified and they were identified by themselves. I mentioned earlier, Mike, the younger sister, April, I might've said Cynthia, but uh, the youngest sister, April, uh, interacted with a spirit who identified himself as Oliver Richardson, and he was a little boy himself, and he became friends with Andrea's little sister, April. Mm -hmm. Um, And they had all sorts of awesome experiences. Uh, Andrea actually talked to another one of her sisters, Cindy. She asked her about why the spirits, um, she wondered if, like, if the family moved, if the spirits could move with them, and her sister told her, said, no, they're trapped here. And if they could have gone with us, we when we left, they would have, because these spirits loved us. And Andrea says that, the, that that feeling was mutual, and she felt like when the family finally did move out in 1980, they felt like they were leaving a family behind, you know, or members of the family, the ones that the positive ones that they're interacting at. Oh, geez, Mike just got attacked by something. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I think Mike almost just got murdered by his dog or something. That was interesting. Yeah, we've. we've it sounds seamless. Well, it probably sounds. Uh, kind of bad, but uh, <laughs> we've been pausing on and off here because we've had crazy uh, occurrences ourselves here. Mike literally just got an accident, got accidentally tangled up with his dog. And yeah, she came up here and she got wrapped up in some cords and I got cords hanging here and my microphone got all <laughs> askew. <laughs> all, all, I just glanced up at Mike and I saw like his, his skelly was knocked off his head. <laughs> yeah, I pulled my cap <laughs> off and everything. <laughs> <laughs> headphones were all bent up Damn it. you know she's seven months old wonderful puppy oh yeah but she's got to weigh at least 80 pounds already oh sure I, and she is a force to be reckoned with <clears throat> oh, anyway okay we're gonna have to skip over a lot of stuff here and I, I i i don't want people to get annoyed with hearing me just ramble off the top of my head here so mike let's get to a couple of i just want to throw out a few interesting tidbits and i want to get your feedback on the, Sounds good. Yeah, on the parent family hauntings. Uh Bridget uh has Andrea Perrin's books. And they're they're just they're just they're fascinating. They're I I I need to to borrow them from Bridget. I need to dive into them myself. 
it was many years ago when she uh, when she uh, got into them. But um, I was speaking to her earlier, saying that we were going to be talking about this, and I asked her about some of her thoughts on the books and Andrea Perrin and so on and so forth. And one thing she brought up was the idea that Andrea Andrea is adamant about this is that time, Mike, does not exist in that house. It's when the family enters that, when visitors enter that, when in, anybody enters that house, time ceases to exist. Mm. The time is interwoven. What we talk about with shadow people, Mike, is uh, dimensions are all, <laughs> I mean, it's not, they're not separated, essentially. Right. I'll give you a brief example from Andrea's book where Andrea says that her mother at one point was just in the house by herself. She turned, she was walking around the house. She went into the area of the house where the fireplace used to be. The original construction of the house used to have the fireplace, but now it was all blocked in. It was built over. There was a wall there now by the time they were living there. And she walked into that room there expecting to see what was usually there. But, Mike... She mm-hmm. saw the fireplace. Right. She saw what was once the wooden floor. It was now dirt. She saw what was usually just an empty living area space. Now it was a wooden, like, oak table with a family sitting at wow. this table. Candlelight. Candlelight. And a figure at the table turning around, pointing at Caroline, Andrea's mother, Shouting to her family, there's the ghost. Yeah. There's the ghost pointing to Andrea's mother. Wow. And then that just dissipating and disappearing. I love stories like this, Mike. I would love to have that happen. Gives me chills. And it reminds me of one of my favorite Ghost Hunters episodes where that something very similar happened to Grant and Jason. When I do not remember where they were. Yeah, I remember that. They had an experience where they were interacting with, um, they had been told that there was like an apparition or a ghost that was, a female ghost that was would sit at her vanity and like be brushing her hair looking in the mirror or so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Forgive me if I'm getting the details mixed up. But they caught evidence. They had conversations where they were, they would essentially say, who are you? And the entity replied, or whatever was responding to them, saying, I'm right here, who are you? As if they saw Jason and Grant right. where, whenever and wherever they were at at that time. That's right. I remember that. Now, wrap your head around that, Mike, for a little bit and talk about that for a little bit. The idea oh, of it's just amazing. time not existing and literally like Andrea's mom turned the corner and walked into 1695. Or yeah. Whatever. Oh, man. And there are other stories of that, uh, uh, documented cases of that over over many years. Yeah. There have been uh, stories that have been documented of, of that happening. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. And if you've never seen the movie, The Others with Nicole Kidman, <laughs> that is fantastic. That's and a it, good it, movie. it just deals with that so much. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? I have. I have. It's a great movie. What did you think? I loved it. I thought it was good. I I loved it, too. It was just absolutely fantastic. But that's what, you know, if anybody wants to get a good example of what this is, watch that movie, Mm -hmm. The Others with Nicole Kidman. Yep. No spoiler alerts, or or I should say. No spoiler alerts, but absolutely fabulous. I I should I I said it wrong. No spoilers. This is our spoiler alert kind of type thing. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Yeah. (laughs) Um. Yeah, it 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 is it's something that's really difficult to wrap your brain around, but man, I love it. I absolutely love yeah. that idea. I mean, that that goes back to what we said earlier, Mike, that time just simply does not exist. Yeah. And it's it, something you can just sit and really just think about and think about and go crazy thinking about. Now, is it is is do you think that the possibility of or a reason for why all this is happening? At this locale, is there something about the Earth's energy at that spot, mm. Mike, that is causing this? Is there something there that is where it just, t- whether there was a house there or not, you know? Right. If you were just walking along Earth before this house was built, 
you would, you know, yeah. all of a sudden you'd see a mammoth sitting there for God's sake. Sure. I mean, it could, it could be, uh, anything to do with, uh, the earth's energy ley lines, you know, possibly, uh, you know, uh, you know, just complete bedrock of limestone, like they say that, that generates things like this. There could be like an underground river that flows through underneath the ground where this, these things happen. You know, there's all those things that, that they say uh, can contribute to activity like that. It blows me away. I just, I just don't know what else to say about it. it I love yeah. that. I love that story. I highly encourage everyone to, to buy her books, uh, give them a good read. Uh, I believe they're available in audiobooks as well. I'm not certain about that, but man, they're worth it, Mike. I'm talking to you too, Mike. Oh, I absolutely, yeah. I would do good with the audiobooks. No, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can lay back and nap. That's very true. <laughs> and now, listen. Now, an interesting tidbit here um, that you learn from the books is that when the family moved in originally, Mike, before they knew anything about well, they wouldn't have known anything about the history of the house before they started experiencing anything. They they brought along their dog with them. Well, you know what? Actually, the, I, I, I should... Now, now my memory's getting messed up here. At one point, they got a dog. <laughs> okay? I don't know if they brought it with them. I'm assuming they got it after they moved in because it wasn't named yet. So I'm assuming... Mm. It's been... It's been I, I admit it's been a hell of a long time since we've gone over those books. Long story short... The dog needed a name. They had had no experiences, no look into the history of the house at this point. They named their dog Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Yeah, I saw that coming. Did you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt it, it coming. That's what it was, man. That's amazing. What? I mean, how? How? I mean, other than I mean, I know why why you think that happened. I I have a feeling as to why that happened. The spirit was there. The energy was there. Something yeah. was there that just the name popped into their their creative consciousness and said, no, you are Bathsheba. I wow, that. that's fascinating in itself. Yeah, kind of divine intervention in a way. Not, yeah, not divine intervention. But, yeah, you know, right. <laughs> yeah. On a very minimal scale. <laughs> uh, I am God and you shall tell this dog Bathsheba. Yeah, I don't, you know what, I'm, yeah, I'm just full of crap tonight, apparently. I sound like <laughs> shit, but man alive. Uh, I am this I am. I, I've been I've been uh, kind of flummoxed a little bit by a lot of uh, well doggy issues. Crazy. I'm I'm worried. I'm concerned about Mike's back. I don't want him to fall off his chair right now in the middle of recording. Oh uh, uh, yeah. You know. Well, you know, Mike. Let's 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 wrap it up here again. Yes. Uh, um, we are sh we're, we're short on time. We gave a very brief rundown, a very 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 brief rundown um, of the parent family hauntings. Um, I will say real quick that the 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 exorcism scene in the Conjuring movie, uh, Andrea Perrin says that that scene, um, while well made, was completely different from what they experienced and was not nearly as terrifying as to the true life experience that they went through. Mm. Uh, she saw her mom like her phys her mom physically like rolled up in a ball and hurled twenty feet across the, uh, from one room to the other. And her father, all of them started hearing her mother talk in a language that did not exist on this, that does not exist on this earth. And See, that, that alone right there says a lot. That is. Where did that come from? Where did that and how? come Yeah. And it's, you know, the, 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 the medium who was there collapsed on the table. Um, the, the priest was cowering in the corner. They were all, I mean, everyone saw this and she's like, you know, me and my sisters, we were all there. This is something we'll never, ever forget. Oh, of course. I mean, she thought her mom was dead at that point. Um, she says, thank God her mom does not remember this ever happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, Lorraine, uh, the Warrens, Andrea, I have to get this out there. She says they had the best intentions when they came there. The movie made it sound like they exercised the demons, and then it was a happy ending after that. That's not true. Um, mm -hmm. nothing really came about. They didn't, they didn't exercise anything. And in fact, occurrences became worse after they left. Andrea's wow. dad did not like the Warrens being there. They would only come there when Andrea's dad was not there. Essentially. Um, they visited mm. six times over the course of a year. Um, it came 
came to a to a, to a head when Andrea's dad fi- uh, dad finally slugged um, Ed in the face really? and pulled the kid out of the house. And then when they did finally return a while later to check on the health of Andrea's mom, Andrea's mom told them to go away. So wow, it's um, amazing. I did, did not did yeah, I did not know that Andrea. I mean, it's like I said, she has so much respect for Lorraine and Ed. She thought that they had the best of intentions, but she didn't really appreciate um, or she doesn't agree with the idea of everything being so negative and demonic that was in that house because they really focused on mm. a lot of demonic stuff. I mean, it's kind of, yeah. I, I can see Zach Bagans getting some influence from the Warrens there because they really right. focused on the evilness and the demonic. Well, you know, and, and Ed being a, a demonologist, yes, you know, I mean, right. that's going to be a big focus of, of what he does, well, well, of, of what he did. Of course, of course. But again, yeah. Andrea says there was very positive spirits there too. She was like, they, they're yeah. just, they're, they're like humans. They range in personalities, you know. And that would, that would have been some interesting uh, points in a movie, you would think. I but would, they just I wanted to focus so. on the bad, the scary, yes. and just, just a total fright fest. Absolutely. And yeah. the, and the doll Annabelle had nothing to do with the parent family. They have no, yeah. idea, they had no idea what this what this doll was all about but she understands that the movie the movie business is a movie business for reasons and they had a trilogy of movies planned even more than a trilogy of movies planned now right and so they had to intertwine all of them so they had to somehow conjecture or uh basically make up a connection between the annabelle doll and the parent family conjuring right. so they could go smoothly into the sequel yep about annabelle so, and then take it as far away from the original story as they yes, possibly could. Yes. And again, I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy these movies. I enjoyed them all up until the last one. That was by far my least favorite. So that's just my yeah. humble opinion. All right, Mike. Thank you so much, my friend. Final yeah. word, final take, one last take. Believer or not, Mike, in the parent family hauntings. What do you what do you say, my friend? I am a believer in something that something did happen there. And uh uh I think what Andrea had to say leaves uh, gives a lot of credence to what actually did happen, um, and I think she put the story more straight. And uh, I can put my faith in her and what her what she had to say about it. I think you said that pretty well, man. Um, I I agree with you a hundred percent on that one. I absolutely believe that something was going down at that house. Uh, something supposedly still is happening at that house, Mike, right. with, with the new owners. Uh, this, uh, the aforementioned Zach Bagans and Andrea Perrin revisited that house for an episode of Ghost Adventures not that long ago. Yeah, um, Go check that out. Uh, fascinating. And we all know how dramatic Zach can be, but that's another story. Yeah, altogether. another story. Another podcast altogether. But I am a <laughs> hardcore believer definitely as skeptical as I may portray myself to be sometimes. I absolutely believe something unique and fantastical is going on at that locale. Um, absolutely. Why, why it is, we'll never claim to know. We can only, uh, we can only skep- uh, or speculate, Mike. Speculate, yes. Well, Mike, thank you so much. I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, hang on. We're going to do a Patreon exclusive. We had an idea for a topic, but we're running short on time, but we need to get a Patreon exclusive out there while Mike is still upright. So we're going to do yes. it right now. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. In the meantime, absolutely. what do our awesome listeners need to do, my friend? Peace out. Peace out.